Grixis Phoenix, Dave, or is it Delver? Is it Delver? Is it Delver? Bob, two minutes on that chat. Good luck with your bets. Grixis Phoenix, let's, let's go, says Christmas. Somebody's excited. MTG Banding is here. MTG Banding is here, everybody. Most important question, how good will Brainstorm be in Historic? I don't know, but I can't wait to Brainstorm and then fetch with Fabled Passage. That, that, that is just exciting me so much. Cardboard is also here. What's up, Cardboard? Jamming emotes. I dig it. Ponder to start the game for Bob. And 55% so far on the bets are for Is It Delver. And it looks like things are fluctuating actually pretty fast. People are throwing down thousands of channel points in their bets. And that is uh, very exciting. Very exciting stuff. Also, clock. Yes, thank you, Cardboard. I couldn't do it without chat. There's just too many things to keep track of. I appreciate it, everybody. I used your affiliate link to finish my cons of Tarkir Cube today. Nice. Yes. Please use the affiliate link, everybody. The TCG Player affiliate link and Ink Gaming affiliate links are in the description or in the About section. Bookmark them and do all your shopping with them. And you are supporting the show in a big way by doing so. We get a kickback on every sale. And these channels are, are uh, sustained by this kind of thing. My money is that Brainstorm will be good mainly because of Inquisition and Thoughtseize being in the format. That's true. You know, I didn't think about that, but being able to tuck cards to... to um, all right, we, we have a Thoughtseize here happening. Let me just commentate on that. Ponder, Bolt, two Young Pyromancers, Signature Spellbook Edition, which, which I love, and a Flooded Strand in hand for Bob. Let's tune into the players so we find out what happens here. And it appears that an underground C is on the board for Kaplan, who still doesn't have his dual lands yet, being that he's uh, not oh. at home, and that's okay. Take the ponder. Ponder? Yeah. yeah. And I'll pass. All right. Tap up, keep drawing. Um. Org is psyched about old frame pyromancer. Yeah, some people are psyched about old frame pyromancer. I see some some friends and acquaintances and people in my social media circles or whatever are getting their their old retro frame cards in the mail, and everybody's getting really excited to to play with them in the months to come, years to come, really. Andy hopes brainstorm is good and historic. Not sure how good it will be though. I wish it was ponder actually. Ponder might actually be way better than brainstorm in current historic now that i think about it brainstorm is probably uh the power level we want compared to ponder specifically in historic because there are no fetch lands ponder might be just ridiculous ponder yeah ponder would be absurd dark zero is concerned about foils yeah the excuse me the the foils of the retro frame cards are are a little outrageous at the moment right Players are pretty quiet. Have to um, run out Young Pyromancer. Sure. Young Pyro. Draw. Old Water Flicker Wisp. Nice. <laughs> we new frame mobs. Oh, I'll cast a Brainstorm. It's good. 64% favored for Grixis Phoenix, according to chat. Christmas threw 4,000 channel points towards Phoenix, and the Mighty Penguin 007 put 4,000 towards Is It Delver. And, uh, yeah. We'll see what happens, chat. 64% for Grixis. Those two. Mm -hmm. I'll play a Bloodstained Mire, and I'll fetch. Mm-hmm. Here's the question, though, chat. Do you want to pick up the English? No, they're not all in English. The regular, I don't know. The regular 
uh, Mystical Archives cards, or are you going to get the Japanese Mystical Archives cards? The alternate art. Which ones are you going to pick up? That's good. And I'll cast Fire to Life. Uh, Buried Alive, you said? Yeah. yeah. All right, that's good. Buried Alive resolves. That's okay. not good. Why not both? <laughs> I mean, yeah, why not both? Get one. I'm just assuming most people two, are going to get one or the other. Three. three Phoenixes. Three Phoenixes, of course. Uh, go to my attack step, trigger the Phoenixes. Mm hmm. And I'll attack for nine. All righty. All right, Bob's down to 11. Put you to 10. Yep. 10, and actually. And I'll pass. All righty. To upkeep and find a way out of this. <laughs> the Mighty Penguin and Christmas. I, I, I don't want to go off on a whole tangent right now about the art, but, but, um, the art on the new Faithless Looting is not garbage. It is not garbage. Get a volcanic island. And then I'll pass to you. And tap, draw. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I've been working as a professional artist, I guess, for, yeah, I'm an art, I, I'm an artist for more than 10 years now. That's been my only source of income is creating stuff. And I know what it's like when someone bashes your content or says your art or your design sucks. So I try not to do that. I'll give my real opinions when I'm in safe company and I won't offend anyone. Um, but saying art sucks misunderstands. I, I, I'm, tr I'm trying not to open up a can of worms with this, but um, let's put it this way. And I said this once before on stream, and this is the only short way I know of saying this. If you were to go to an art gallery where that Faith is Looting art, because we're talking about that particular art, was hanging amongst other similar arts, and you pointed at it and you said, this art sucks, people would laugh at you because you clearly don't know what you're talking about. And the magic community, for whatever reason, feels like it's okay to just all over the place, just on social media, just say this art, that art sucks. And it's just very ignorant. And um, that's it. That's all I want to say. I, I really don't want to go on and on about this. I want to talk about magic. All right. Kaplan with no tokens. That's a game loss. Gotta get life totals updated here. I'll uh, pass you. Yeah, stasis, stasis mm -hmm. art is very odd, for sure. Uh, I'll cast a preordain trigger. Mm -hmm. It's good. Also, I think a lot of the, you know, when when you when you imagine just something as simple as a uh, a magazine stand where there's all different kinds of imagery um, and someone grabs a magazine to look at because they're attracted to a particular cover, not everybody is going to be attracted to that same cover. So when you have product on a shelf in a store, for example, same thing. When you have art for a game or for anything, any kind of a product, 
and magic trying to appeal to people who look at the world a different way, who like different things, is a, is a good thing. People who like pop art, hip hop art, people who like, um, oh, that first, all right, game one goes to Kaplan. People who like anime they've done recently, people who like classic, uh, um, what's the word? Um, not Renaissance, like, uh, not, now I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, enough about the stupid art. Stop bashing art, everybody. Th 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 this is not, this is not uh, what we should be doing. Game one goes to Grixis. Yeah, there's also that card Hushbringer or Hush Taker or whatever from a recent set. I think it was like M20 or was it L Train or something? That had some different kinds of art. I think, I think, especially uh, if we ever get a live action um, uh, Magic the Gathering show or movie or something, it'll be cool to have either still photography or, um, you know, uh, frames from, from film, cinema, as magic art as well. So, like, real people in, in the art might be interesting as well. Some games do that. Does Wizards print cards for players in Japan using the normal artwork from U.S. Europe, or do they have Japanese artists for their sets? You mean for all sets? I think it's the same same art for all sides, other than this alt art stuff. All right, a fetch for Bob to get started here. Yeah, everybody will find art for the cards that they want to play. Yeah, that's true. Let's turn to the players here. Uh... Play Lotus. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you, Jarvis, for the raid. What's up, everybody? We're here in round one, game two of uh, Grixis Phoenix versus Is It Delver. We have four rounds of Tabletop Legacy in store for everybody. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for the raid. Days on Thoughtseize here? Is that what's happening? Days on Thoughtseize? Interesting. Interesting. Doctor Doomsday, thanks for the follow. Oh. Hmm. Is that true, HC Fox? I don't know. That's fine. Yeah. Smart and days, I'll I guess. Have... Just countered countered it. Wasn't willing to sack the pedal. Delver trigger. I'll reveal. Draw. What happened? It looks like it could be true. Oh, okay. HC Fox making stuff up, everybody. Play a volcanic island. And I will attack for one. 19 up. And I'll pass you. Draw. Mm -hmm. Play a uh, blood stain mar. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you're playing stifle. <laughs> you're right, force of fill. No. All right, I'll fetch. Fetch. Go to 18. Uh, grab a volcanic island. I was surprised in game one to see a completely uncontested. There's a volcanic island, a beautiful one. I think it's a beta. Um, we we were we saw in game one a completely uncontested buried alive. We'll see if uh, Bob has counter magic in store this time. I'll play a pyromancer. Pyromancer. Different game plan maybe here in game two. For Kaplan, at least. Pyromancer is a pain in the butt. Well, Hydroblast that. Hydroblast. I'm going to Pyroblast the Hydroblast. 
<laughs> I don't know why I think that's funny. And I'll pass. Any thoughts on the Chain of Smog Witherbloom Apprentice combo? Um, I, I'm really bad at uh, evaluating new cards, but it does look like a legit combo. Um, if protected in the right deck with Veil of Summers and all that fun stuff, it could be. It seems like it could have some legs in Legacy. Tomorrow, on our 1 p.m. Eastern stream. I believe at least one player will be trying out that combo on stream. So make sure you're here tomorrow. We're going to try and see it in, in action. Move in for, uh, for one. 17. One good thing about playing tabletop on this channel is that we're able to play test new cards before everybody. That 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 is uh, my favorite thing about this channel, actually. So tomorrow we're going to test out some Strixhaven cards. And if you have ideas for decks, combos, legacy staples from new, the new set, send them to me. And I'll, I'll make sure they get tried out on stream. Ben refuses to clear their entire schedule to make sure they can catch tomorrow's stream. That's okay, Ben. Play two. And cast an all rod. Sure. <laughs> Lose the plow. And yeah, it, it probably loses the plow. Null rod. Uh, play a ponder trigger. Mm -hmm. Null rod doesn't feel very exciting here. Uh, shuffle. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. You're right. That Delver still hasn't flipped, folks. Something's going wrong. Yeah, Rowan's Incident Sorcery cost reduction seems interesting. I don't know if it's Legacy playable. I read those cards and I was kind of unimpressed Draw. for mm -hmm. Legacy. Uh, play an island. Uh, ponder again. Trigger. Yep. Yeah, it does nothing. It does nothing. Uh, the correction. Shuffle. Another well, that's what it's there for, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it is fun flavor text. No rod, uh, no rod flavor text is up there in maybe top ten for most people. I feel like we do this once a month, but let me know what your favorite Draw. flavor text of all time is. Uh. Two elemental tokens now for Kaplan. Might. Uh... Kaplan doesn't know it yet, but I sent him an email for a $500 fine for not bringing tokens to the stream. So you're taking with just the young pirate, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'll pass. So 16, 17? Yep. Okay, your turn. Like that. Delver trigger. Yep. BFM. <laughs> now we're real. Still no flip on that Delver, everybody. Just an update on that. I can see Bob. He looks well, upset. Too. <laughs> he's on. He's on webcam. My own environment. I will daze that trigger. Brutal. Uh, I'll pass you. Okay, on top. Draw. What does chat think of Rip Apart? Is that a legacy playable card? The red white sorcery, destroy target artifact enchantment, or deal three damage to target creature or planeswalker? Is that legacy playable? Uh, let's. Shuffle. Someone in chat, hi Zera, just said Homelands is better than Ice Age. Should I ban this person or should I let them live? <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I'm going to jam the Homelands and Ice Age emotes just to respond to that. 
and because we have them. Ban. Okay, so some people are calling for a banning. Make them write a 1,000 word essay on why. That's actually a pretty good punishment. Um, Sorcery is a huge drawback, I agree. Maybe Teferi can make it work. All <laughs> the three. All right. Take three. 13. I love Homelands. 13. I loved Homelands as a kid. And I'll pass. All right. And tap. Okay. Uh, Delver Trigger. <laughs> nope. What's that Jesus. flavor text, Dark Zero? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's rough. It's a four, right? Is it four? Three. Yeah. I know we're getting there. I was about to say five, but yeah, four sounds right. Um, play no Delver. Sure. Things are not going um, well for Bob. I'll pass to you. Okay. And tap draw. Mm -hmm. uh, how many cards do you have? Homelands have versus Ice Age Twitch Pole. Two cards. Done. Uh, play a Pyromancer. Pyromancer's good. And. Play a brainstorm, trigger two. A lot of ele elementals. Every time he makes an elemental that is not a token card, brainstorm, okay, is a one hundred dollar fine. Sorry, it's, uh, uh, okay. Sorry, I didn't speak up. No. Uh, all good. <laughs> one, two, three, put back. There's a poll going on right now, chat. Uh, one. And then I'll play a underground C and I'll play a pure dam trigger mm -hmm. two. Uh, That's good. I'll move these two to the bottom. Necropotence the deciding factor yeah. for some. And then I will attack with the uh, four tokens. All right. I believe that's nine. nine. We're not talking about Lorwyn right now. <laughs> this is about All right. homelands. All right, this time's a charm. Hey. All right. <laughs> I had to do that eventually. I mean, now you have two pyroblasts waiting for me, right? <laughs> Homelands was the worst set ever. I think that's a ban. All right, two flip delvers, and we'll have to see if these flyers can get there somehow. So can I ask how many tokens you have right now? Four tapped, four untapped. Got it. Eight total. Homelands or Prophecy? And your ads are not great. What about best set? What's the best set? And and you can't get, say, like Modern right, Masters or something. I'm talking about like a regular uh, standard set. Ponder? Sure. All right. Urza Saga best set, says Comical Flop. All right, we got two Urza Saga votes already. Another Urza Saga vote. Immediately, everybody brought up, brought up Urza Saga. Come back like this. Odyssey. Okay, someone picked Odyssey. Draw my card.
Innistrad. So far, nobody got the correct answer and said Born of the Gods. You're at 17? Yeah. I can't even say it with a straight face. Born of the Gods is probably fine. I, I, that's just a set that I know everybody hated. I wasn't really playing at the time. <laughs> everybody left. The players are so quiet. What are they doing? Whose turn is it? All right. I will have red. I'll bolt one of your uh, pyromancers. Sure. Bolt a pyromancer. We're getting somewhere. Needs a blazing volley or something and here. Then... Otherwise, this is not going to go well. What's my favorite set? You. What is my favorite set? I mean, Ice Age was my first, first-ish set, and I really loved it because those were all the cards I had, and uh, I had just had a ton of Ice Age cards as a kid, and I made like Ice Age decks as a kid, just Ice Age set. Um. But, it, you know, like, on a scientific level, if I were to say, this was the best set ever in Magic the Gathering history. Um, I don't know. That's hard. I really liked Time Spiral, but I understand a lot of people didn't like Time Spiral. I came back for the game for Konzatark here, and I thought that set was great. But I feel like maybe a lot of people just liked that set because there were fetch lands. But the limited was great. I really like Tempest also as a kid. This was like little kid, little kid mind though. You know, I was like, Shadow is good. <laughs> you know. Um, I do have a Food of Delta and a Plague Engineer. Wolf. So I'll name. Uh, it's a human insect, right? Ah, uh, yes, it's human insect. Uh, yeah, I'll name human. It's minus two, minus two, right? Uh, minus one, minus one. But oh, okay. they, do, they do already have a damage from the elemental. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So it sweeps. And yeah. <laughs> and I'll pass. Right. Invasion is up there for me. Like invasion. I, I, um, I was roughly in my early teens or coming into my early teens and that set like blew my mind all the gold cards i got really really excited for that set when it came out and it was just like a war was happening and all these gold cards and all the cards looked really cool to me at the time uh i was holding on to the uh surgical the whole game oh yeah yeah that's a tough one it's such a good card against buried alive it just it does exactly what it needs to for free. The pyromancers ended up being the 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 big problem in the end for for Bob, right? The yeah. Did did you bring in like blazing volley or anything? I don't have your deck list in front of me right now. Did you bring in any no, way to handle not pyromancers? Running blazing volley, which gotcha. Now with more and I see more and more pyromancer in the format, I probably need to add it to the sideboard. Yeah, Bla Blazing Volley can be a gross card sometimes. Jay Pinter, thanks for the raid. Welcome, everybody. We're just wrapping up round one here. Um, Royal Scions. I want to ask you about that. Have, have you been running it? I, I really like this card, and I wanted it to be in all my legacy decks. When, it, when, when I saw it first previewed, and I was like blind to Oko at that point, I was like, Royal Scions, <laughs> this is what everybody needs to be doing right now. Um, so have you had some success with it? So I've actually had, when I've landed it, it's been great. Two is too many, especially with, uh, especially back when I was running three preordains because mm -hmm. I had so many cantrips. I'm just like, I ended up running into two all, uh, enough. So I'd re rather have like another burn spell, but finding that one with like a Delver or a true, especially a true name nemesis, just essentially is game over. Um, 
it also just helps you dig to whatever card you need. So your silver bullet in the format. I've I've actually really liked it. And that starting with what five loyalty is insane. So uh Yep. You know, I know that it only loots for one instead of uh two, like Dak, but I think the starting with five loyalty makes up for that. And uh, this is a question from chat from Dark Zero. Why no rod? Uh, I was uh, I was thinking I was on the play and I was just gonna bring it down so he wasn't wouldn't have access to his uh, lotus petals to like try and go off. But I realized that was probably a mistake. I actually haven't seen Phoenix much, so um, yeah. Um, like, what what did you side out? I, I know you don't do it like one by one, card by card, but what kind of stuff did you side out that maybe could have stayed in instead of having Null Rod? This is what I sided out. Force of Will, Royal Sons. I feel like I feel like the counter magic is good in this matchup. What, what do you think, Kaplan? You're you're the other you're the other deck. Yeah, I mean, Nora's interesting. It did actually lock out a Lotus Petal in my hand, but um, it, it was like after turn three, so it wasn't as important. As, yeah. But it, I could definitely see it, um, you know, lock, possibly locking out a Lotus Petal. Um, you know, I, I do like the counter magic, uh, but I, I do think that counter magic is probably more important on the draw than on the play. Uh, so yeah, I, I could see something like Royal Scions maybe being a little bit slow. That makes sense to board out. Hydro Blast and Surgical seem good. Um, but yeah, you know, I kind of understand boarding out, you know, forces because, you know, there's a good chance I board out some of my combo and, um, you know, just going attrition, like I have a ton of creatures to bring in. So having like six, um, two for one in yourself, you know. I, I can, was. I can understand that. Even though the surgical was for the phoenix, I was one hundred percent going to surgical, the uh, surgical the first um, young pyromancer. If you had, mm -hmm. like, if if you didn't have the, because I had the pyroblast and then you had the pyroblast. So yep. if there wasn't, uh, if you didn't have that pyroblast, I was definitely planning on surgicaling the. Um, the, oh, yeah. that that would have been really good i, I don't then, remember if i had the other pyromancer in my hand already but um i, I might have that would have been really really good and then like, uh, yeah go ahead sorry i mean at that point you just take them all out of your hand and then if i don't know if you sided out some of the uh, the the phoenixes or not but if you did then i kind of feel like i took would take you off your win conditions <laughs> yeah, i like it's yeah pretty go ahead. Sorry shave a buried alive and a phoenix and go down to three and three especially gotcha. in the draw against the day's deck um, yep. i like to bring in just all my my creatures um because yeah surgical is pretty good against me yeah. um for 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 bob's list uh, this is this is just how i think i would approach the sideboarding here i'm not saying i'm right this is just how, what what i would was looking at um Etherrow Forager and the Royal Scions seem slow and maybe could be cut. The Force yeah. of Wills um, trim some of those. And cards worth bringing in, like Hull Breacher seems really good against Kaplan. And that's, I like Power I Blast wondering. and Red Blast. What's that? So that's why I was I was really thinking about bringing in. So what you were saying is actually was my, like, I, was, I, was, I had two side war plans in mind. This, and then what you've said so far was my, was my, other sideboard plan. I kind of wish I did that. <laughs> yeah, and Hull Breacher. Um, Bringing in the second Hull Breacher. And I like Power Blast and Red Blast in a matchup like this, because if Kaplan just is looking for his stuff and says, okay, yeah. main phase, ponder, and you just counter it, that could be the ga that could be a game-winning yeah. play. It could be. Yeah. Um, so I like that. And... Submerge, I guess, doesn't really do anything. And Price of Progress, does that does that kill Kaplan here? It can do mm, some damage. I don't know. I mean, I have a couple of basics. And oh, you do have basics. Yeah, yeah. You my my non-basics are going to get wastelanded immediately. 
Yeah, I guess you're yeah, right. Yeah, I can't I That's didn't see one late wasteland the entire game, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, price of progress <laughs> is a little bit of a stretch, I guess. But um yeah, th- those are the cars I would be looking at. Um, yeah, no, that makes sense, yeah. Yep. Um I just, I actually legitimately I haven't seen it on a TGO and I've not seen it in paper, not uh at least with the the play group I've been playing with. So that was yeah. good games and definitely made me think about it. I really had uh, you know, this is a good learning experience for sure. I was uh, happy to have the games because now I know. I think I know how I want a sideboard. I think I would yeah. leave in at least one forger um, because yeah, the card is fun. very, the card is very like very good uh, at grind like grinding out the game. Yep. So. Um. All right, we're gonna wrap up round one here. Right. Thank you to Bob.